This is Dr. Shannon Wong. I'm an ophthalmologist in Austin, Texas at Austin Eye. I'm going to demonstrate this case involving a 57-year-old patient who has eight incision RK previously. Her refractive error is approximately plus 3.75 and this is a visually significant cataract. Because she's had prior RK, we're going to do laser cataract surgery combined with use of the crystal lens AO. In this screenshot, you're seeing us aligning the lens X incisions. Uh, we move the primary incision peripherally to the limbus. Uh, my primary incision width is 2.8 millimeters. My secondary incision has a 1.2 millimeter external opening and a 1.0 internal opening. The diameter of the capsular rexus uh, or the capsulotomy that I've programmed for this case is 5.2 millimeters. And I have pre-marked this patient where you can see the purple marks at the 3 and 9 o'clock position. We need to pay close attention to avoid intersecting any of the radial keratotomy incisions. And here you see as we adjust our primary incision location and our arcuate incision location. The arcuate incision is located at about 2.30 on the position of the cornea. We're careful to uh, avoid any of the intersecting any of the eight RK incisions. Now that we've got good positioning of all our corneal incisions, we uh, center our capsulotomy on the pupil. We then activate our OCT and the top right image is an image of the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule in the lens. We get a zoomed in version of the uh, image of the anterior capsule and this image uh, helps us to account for any lens tilt. My capsulotomy uh, cut with the femto is about 300 microns above and below the capsular uh, plane. Here we're confirming our lens chop, our corneal and our arcuate incisions, and then we activate the laser and the laser starts with the capsulotomy first. On the lower right screen, the purple bar indicates the progress of the capsulotomy. It starts below the capsule, anterior capsule, and moves upward. And then it, we're creating a chop pattern and a cylinder pattern. I believe the cylinder pattern is four millimeters in diameter. The chop mat pattern extends uh, probably 5.5 to six millimeters in diameter. The progress of the chop pattern is the yellow bar on the lower right corner. Now we make our primary incision, arcuate incision, and secondary incision. And then we release suction. We have edited this uh, video somewhat to um, consume less time. We've taken the patient back to the operating room. We coat the cornea with Ocucoat viscoelastic. I use a cyclodialysis spatula to open the secondary incision and then we just use Ocucoat to fill the anterior chamber.
I use a smooth tying forceps to stabilize the eye as I open the primary incision again with a cyclodialysis spatula. We want to keep the anterior chamber pressurized as it can be under pressure from the bubbles created by the femtosecond laser. The femtosecond laser we use is the Lens X laser made by Alcon. I use a cystotome connected to the viscoelastic to just separate the pre lasered capsulotomy and it frees up nicely. But we're just being careful to make sure that the capsulotomy has no. Uh, focal adhesions. We work our way around. And at this point, everything looks good. We're free and clear. I use a Hu femtosecond forcep to gently widen the primary incision prior to insertion of our FACO tip. I do a very gentle hydro dis dissection. So in this view, we've got a cross pattern that's been lasered in the lens and a cylinder pattern as well. I'll use less FACO emulsification energy in removing this cataract. Uh, my initial step is just to um, increase the width of the initial groove and I don't go very deep at all because all I'm doing is widening the initial groove in order to place my instruments between it so we can separate the pre-softened nucleus. So a little widening and we just separate it and it separates nicely. We rotate the lens and just separate the other pieces as well. So the Lens X laser does help to soften the cataract and it facilitates uh, removal of the cataract in a with less much less phaco energy than what we could achieve with basic cataract surgery. In this particular case, we've created an arcuate incision, which you can see at twelve o'clock on the screen. I chose not to open this incision. Um, because the patient had prior RK and I got very varying keratometry readings, I wanted to have this arcuate incision on standby, ready to be opened in the future, should uh, it be needed to reduce the amount of postoperative astigmatism. Now that the central nucleus has been removed, we stromal hydrate the secondary incision to uh, perhaps improve the stability of the anterior chamber during irrigation and aspiration of the cortical remnants. I use a silicone tip irrigation and aspiration uh, instrument made by MST Microsurgical. 
for crystal lenses, I'm meticulous in getting rid of all cortical fragments. And in a moment, you'll see us use the Singer Sweep, which will actually help us to remove lens epithelial cells from the posterior surface of the anterior capsule leaflet. You can see in this view a very exact and well-centered uh, capsulotomy. The subincisional epithelial cells adherent to the posterior surface of the intercapsule can be removed by sweeping it with the Singer sweep, named after Jack Singer, an ophthalmologist in Vermont. Going through the primary incision, we can approach the lens epithelial cells that are below the, uh, the secondary incision. We've filled the eye with uh, viscoelastic, and now we're going to insert the crystal lens. I use a crystal cert. I insert my smooth tie forceps to, through the secondary incision to stabilize it. I'm careful not to overstretch this wound. I don't want to have the RK incisions open up. The Crystal Lens AO inserts easily with the Crystal Cert. Usually I'm able to get three, if not four, haptics in the bag. Here I've got three haptics in the bag. And I'll just use my silicone tip IA to rotate this lens slightly counterclockwise. And in that movement, the fourth haptic will drop down into the capsular equator. We then spin the lens around to free up any equatorial cortex and to completely remove the viscoelastic. While we're spinning the lens, we're assessing at what orientation the lens would best fit within the capsulotomy opening that we have created. Once we remove the IA tip, the anterior chamber shallows, the lens vaults more anteriorly, and here we're going underneath the optic of the crystal lens to remove any viscoelastic which may be trapped behind the lens implant. It also helps us to remove any little cortical cells of the cataract that uh, manage to find their way underneath the lens. Now at the conclusion of the case, we're refilling the bag. Here we need a uh, watertight incision and the LensX laser does not let us down. We stromal hydrate our primary incision as you can see, we've avoided splitting, opening, splitting open any of the RK incisions. I rock the lens back and forth to make sure the haptics are within the equator of the bag and not trapped anywhere else. I want to avoid and prevent a Z syndrome with this crystal lens due to abnormal fixation and fibrosis of the capsular bag with the lens. We verify that our optic is well centered within our capsulotomy opening and here it looks gorgeous. And then we pay attention to the primary incision and we make sure it's watertight and that the eye is able to maintain a physiologic pressure. Thank you for your time and attention.